and Wells in heaven. We get letters like that all the time. Jack, we've got a wonderful video on yeah. in there. I'm not going to spend a lot of time with that now because you can get an hour and a half video from 10 of the greatest theologians in history, Dr. John Calvin, 500 years ago, and uh, Dr. Criswell, Dr. Torrey, and just so many. And recently I saw how John Wesley, founder of Methodism, taught that animals would be there along with C.S. Lewis. But I'm not going to delve into it now. You can study this in Revelation chapter 4, verses 6 through 11. And when it talks about the beast and the living creatures there, the King James Version had no term for animals. Put animals wherever it says beast, except for the beast called the Antichrist. And every time it says beast, put animals there, and you'll see they're going to be there. Not only that, but when Christ returns to earth, Isaiah chapter 11, verse 6 onwards, pictures all the animals running around the streets of heaven and they're tamed and a little child shall lead them. That is heaven at the time and the animals are going to be there. And when we come back to rule and reign with them, I believe the animals who went up with us at the rapture, where is that? Romans 8, 22 and 23, now return with us to be here on earth and they're going to be our pets forever and forever. Mm, something else in heaven. You can't uh, imagine heaven without it. Angels. Angels are going to be in heaven. Jack, do we each have an angel, don't we, that God assigns to us when yep. we're born? Well, two-thirds of the angels are in heaven presently. When Satan fell, he took one-third of the angels with him in Revelation 12, verse 4. But, oh, I love this. When Lazarus died, he was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom, the heaven of that time. And I believe that every believer has a guardian angel to take him up at the rapture when we say, come up hither. Why? Because Hebrews 1.14 says, Are not the angels ministering spirits sent forth to minister to them, watch the terminology, who shall be the heirs of salvation? Christians have salvation now when they receive Jesus. But this is the salvation of the bodies and the angels are carrying us through space. And we're going to get there in the twinkling of an eye. General Electric says that's 11 one hundredths of a second. And I just told you that it's at least 186 trillion billions of miles. 11 hundredths of a second. We're there. If this man had been alive when Barbara Walters did her special, she may have interviewed him because he had something to say about heaven. It was Joe Lewis heavyweight champion of the world from 1937 to 1949, he said, everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. Well, you know, Jack, I don't think anybody really wants to die, but everybody does want to go to heaven, but we have to exit this body. Oh, in a few minutes from now, we're going to see how wonderful it is, and if we could see it ahead of time, we'd long to go because it's such a wonderful place. And oh, I admired Joe Lewis. I was just a kid. Every time he got in there, I used to <laughs> box with him as a little boy at home. And Adolf Schickelgruber, Hitler, said, we are the master race, and I'm sending Max Schmeling, my top heavyweight, to America to do away with this black boy. Well, they were surprised. Hitler was humiliated. Joe Lewis was one of the greatest champions in the history of boxing. And... He was my hero. He's right. Right. And we have to die. Uh, someone said they're dying to get into the graveyard. But you have to die to get to heaven too. And that's why Job 7 verse 1 says, Is there not an appointed time to man on the earth? Hebrews 9 27 says, It's appointed unto man once to die. But oh, if one knows Jesus, if one has received as, as Savior, uh, happy are the dead which die in the Lord, Revelation 14, verse 13. And Paul can say, to die is gain, Philippians 1, 21, because of what awaits us on the other side. Yeah, and you're not alone when you die either. You know, Psalm 23, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil, yeah. for thou art with me. We don't exit here alone. And the angels transport us, Amen. Hebrews 1, 14. Right, beautiful. Well, I got a question in the mail the other day. When I, as a Christian, die, will I be with Christ right away? Or be asleep in the grave, not knowing anything, until the day of the rapture? And this young lady is asking about soul sleep. I said my mom and dad are in heaven. 
because their soul and their spirit are with him right now, with the Lord Jesus right now. Now, a major cult in some denominations teach that when you die, your soul sleeps in the body. Now, Jack, uh, soul sleep is not in the Bible, is it? I can contradict that theory in a moment. James 2.26, quoted earlier, I repeat it, as the body without the spirit is dead. Something has left the body. The spirit returns to God who gave it. Ecclesiastes 12, verse 7. Not only that, but 2 Corinthians 5, 8 says, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. In the theory of soul sleep, that soul and spirit stay in the body until judgment day. That's not what this book says. It says to be absent from the body. Something has vacated this corpus. And what is it? The spirit that's gone to be with God. Now, I love this. 1 Thessalonians 4.13. I never quote this when I quote verses 16 to 18 out of the air. It says, I would not have you be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, those that have died in Jesus, that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. Now listen, if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, so also them that are asleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Now, will all you soul-sleeping advocates tell me how he can bring the dead with him in verse 13 to come and get the dead in verse 16? For the dead in Christ shall rise first. Because they're in two places. The Spirit left the body and went to be with the Lord and is in glory right now rejoicing. And at the rapture, they come to get the bodies of those spirits. Now, you see, they don't need a body on the other side. It's a spirit world. God's a spirit, John 4, 24. The Holy Spirit's a spirit, John 16, 12. Christ was a spirit, became flesh when he took a body to die on the cross for us, Philippians 2, verses 10 and onward. The angels are spirits, Hebrews 1, 14. So it's a spirit world except Christ being there in his new resurrected body and we're not going to deal with Enoch and Elijah right now because it gets too complicated. But one day, those two witnesses are going to be preaching in Jerusalem, Revelation 11, and they're going to be killed for their ministry, and then they're going to hear the same words we heard, come up hither, and they sweep through the heavenlies in their new glorified bodies. But right now, they're there in their normal bodies. The only two there with normal bodies, the rest is all spirit world, but the spirit world communicates with one another. We just don't understand it all. Then why do they come back to get their bodies? Because they're going to rule and reign with Jesus on earth. The final heaven, Revelation uh, 19, 16 and chapter 20, verse 4, for a thousand years. And they can't rule over others as spirit beings because the people on earth will still be in normal bodies and they have to be able to see those ruling over them. So they come to take on bodies just like Jesus took on a body at the resurrection uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful teaching. Amen? I'm going to ask him a little bit more about that body in just a few moments, but I, I want to get to uh, the place of heaven right now. And I'd like for Jack to see if he can describe it. The Apostle Paul had an out-of-body experience. He was in the city of Lystra, and they stoned him. And he actually saw heaven. And he came back, he said, I, I, I can't describe it. Words can't express it. Jack, uh, help us out here uh, with that experience, will you please? Oh, I love this lesson that God showed me many years ago. In Acts chapter 14, verses 19 and 20, the Apostle Paul is stoned for his bombastic preaching of the gospel. There came thither from certain from Enoch and Iconium, who persuaded the people, and having stoned Paul, drew him out of the city, supposing he was dead. Now, they took him to the garbage dump of Lystra. Watch this. That text was written in 46 A.D. 2 Corinthians 12 was written in 60 A.D. He got it 46 to 60 is 14 years. Now, Paul is speaking in the form of another person, so no one thinks that he's egotistical and a braggart. But listen to what he says. I knew a man in Christ about 14 years ago. <laughs> that takes it right back to the stoning at Lystra. Whether in the body I cannot tell or whether out of the body I cannot tell, God knows. 
how that such an one was caught up to the third heaven. And I knew such a man. You sure did. Whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. How he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. Now, this proves that it's all spirit world over there, but they have a speech going on. They communicate. They're laughing. They're fellowshipping. We just don't understand the spirit or spiritual world. Now, that's going to change when we come back with Christ because it'll then be bodies on earth forever and forever. The time of the resurrection. Isn't that a wonderful thought? Paul had already seen it. And so he could say in 1 Corinthians 2, nine, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither hath entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. But the Spirit made it manifest unto me. I was there. I don't know whether I was out of my body and it was the Spirit leaving the body to be there and then I came back to earth or whether I was unconscious and had a vision. But either way, God showed me the other side and I want to say it was unspeakable. The most beautiful thing I have ever seen in my life. And if all of us could have that experience, believe me, we wouldn't be like Joe Lewis, who said, everyone's talking about heaven, but nobody wanted to die. We'd long to go there. And, you know, if we just accept what the Word of God says, there'd be a desire for heaven. Two things I got out of that. Heaven is a glorious place to see, and heaven is a glorious place to hear things we've never heard before. Jack, um, you've explained so beautifully that when our loved ones die and they know the Lord, their spirit and soul go to be with Him. But the body's in the grave. You know, we take flowers over to the graveyard all the time to our parents' graves. Now, we believe that the bodies are going to be raptured. They're going to come forth with glorified bodies like the body of Jesus when He came out of the, the tomb a glorified body. Jack, uh, you as a theologian call that the rapture. Right. Would you please explain the rapture to us okay. here? The rapture is the literal, visible, bodily coming of Christ in the clouds to snatch out of this world first the dead, then the living, to be caught up in the twinkling of an eye to enter what we call the third heaven. It's a wonderful thing. It's literal, visible, and bodily. Yes. He says, come up here to Revelation 4, verse 1. And what happens? 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, 18. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them, with the dead in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Someone said, why do the dead rise first? Because my pastor used to say, and he was from Scotland, because they've got six feet farther to come. <laughs> right. <laughs> anyway, it's also described in 1 Corinthians 15, 51 to 54. Behold, I show you a mystery. Now, that's not like a murder mystery. Mystery in the scripture means something that's only been revealed for the first time. The four gospels don't talk about the rapture. But Paul was the one chosen of God to reveal this great event. He says, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, all be dead, but we shall all be changed, dead and living, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we, the living, shall be changed. Very simple. The dead and the living go up to meet the Lord Jesus Christ, the clouds. And as we sweep into the heavenlies, we are changed to be like Jesus. When he rose, he had a new glorified body. And we will receive our glorified bodies at that time. Bodies can never do wrong, never sin again. That's why David said in Psalm 17, 15, I shall be satisfied when I awaken with thy likeness. Philippians 3, 21, who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body. 1 John 3, verse 2, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, Jesus, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. It's going to be a great day. I've said this before on television, but I love this little joke about the Amishman. 
You know, they don't have cars, they don't have televisions, uh, they don't have electricity in their homes. They're old-fashioned people. Many of them love God. Mm -hmm. And the Amishman said to his son, son, let's go and explore the world. He said, we've never seen anything. Let's see what's happening. He said, okay, Dad. So they got in their old horse pulled buggy and they went down the highway and they saw this place that says mall. He said, what's that? He said, I don't know. Let's stop and see. So they walked in the mall and they were overwhelmed. And then they went to a place where they saw doors slamming open and shut. And he said, Dad, what's that? He says, I don't know. It says elevator. He said, let's watch for a moment. This little old lady, all wrinkly, got on the elevator and all of a sudden the door shut. And he says, Dad, look, it's going up, up, up. Now he says, Dad, it's coming down, down, down. The door is open and out steps a 21-year-old blonde. And the father says, son, go home and get mama. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, I use that for the rapture. <clears throat> These old bodies are going to be changed to be like the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Plus, that's happening because we're going to escape the great tribulation, which is about to happen on the earth. The seven-year period of uh, trial and tribulation in Revelation chapter 6 to 18. We won't be here. Chapter 3, verse 10 of Revelation says, Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will keep you from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world. Keep you from it. The Greek word there is ek, E-K. If God said you're going to go through it, as post-tribulationists teach, he would have put the word that was necessary, dia, D-I-A, through. He said, I'll keep you out of it. And we're looking forward to that moment. By the way, I have a great book entitled The Great Escape. And it's argument after argument from the Word of God why we Christians will not be here during that time. Mm.